So once we have the bone throwing correction factor figured, we need to do paired comparison between two groups at a time to find out where statistically significant difference is. So to do that, we just run t-tests, just like we did a couple weeks ago. Uh, and so we'll do data, data analysis, t-test assuming equal variance. And then for our first one, we'll do Angus compared to Charlotte. So I'll just highlight Angus, highlight Charlotte. Hypothesize mean difference, we'll set it zero. I did include labels, and for the output range, I'll just choose a cell beneath the whole points correction. And there we have it. Between Angus and Charlotte, our, statistically dif our statistical difference has a p-value of 0 0.03. Normally, we'd be excited about a 0 0.03, but because we had to adjust the necessary p-value down to, with the bone peronies, uh, we only we have a p-value that we need to beat of 0 0.016. And so this p-value is bigger than that, which means we didn't beat it, which means we didn't have statistical significance. So for this test, we would say that Angus and Charlotte are statistically similar. They're not different. So let's run the next one. The next one will be Angus and Hereford. And for this one, we got a p-value of 0.756 E negative 6. That means we need to move the decimal place six spots to the left, which is well under the p-value we needed to beat. So we can say there's a statistically significant difference between our Angus and our Herefords. And then the final t-test we need to run is between Charlet and Hereford. So we'll do data, data analysis, two sample t-test assuming equal variance in between Charlet and Hereford. All right, for this one, our p-value for the two-tailed is 1.06 E negative 5. That means we need to move the decimal spot, decimal place five spots to the left, which, once again, is well beneath the bone for always correction factor that we need to defeat. So, we got statistical significance. So we can say there is a statistically significant difference between Angus and Hereford and Charlet and Hereford, but we have to say that Angus and Charlet are statistically similar concerning weight gain. But that's not the last step we do in an ANOVA. The last step after the post hoc test is to run the effect size because the, the statistical tests just tell us there is a statistically significant difference, but that can be a tiny difference in a huge data set. So we don't really know if that difference is important or not until we run the effect size. To run the effect size, uh, it's a simple formula that's between group sums of squares divided by total sums of squares. Thankfully, Excel spits that out. We don't have to do the math ourselves. So we take the between group sums of squares right here, between group sums of squares, and we divide it by the total sums of squares. And that gives us a value of 0.09227. So what we can do, we can interpret that in terms of percent. Uh, so we can say 9% of the variance in weight gain was due to breed. Uh, to put that in words, we can use Cohen's descriptions, which say a medium effect size is from 0.06 to 0.1. So this would be a medium effect size. And that's in the, the PowerPoint posted at the start of this week's lesson. So there you have it. That's how you run the descriptives, the omnibus ANOVA, the post hoc test for the ANOVA using bone Frony's correction factor, and the effect size for a one-way ANOVA. Next week, we'll work on writing these up. If you have any questions, be sure and email me at aschultz at murraystate.edu. Have a good one.